Yes, yes, guys. Welcome in to the big, big preview. City go down to London to the Emirates to take on Arsenal for what is a massive, massive game. I'm joined. What a panel this is, by the way. Got MCFC lads Dan Potsy and Lee Judges to talk us through the game. It's going to be a, it's going to be an intense game. And let, let me come down to let me come down to Judges first of all because I don't know if you agree with this, but I've been talking today. I think the pressure's more on Arsenal, in my opinion, because you guys. I haven't had the best record um, against City in the Premier League over the last, what, seven or eight years. Obviously, we picked you to the title. Do you think that's a fair statement that the pressure is on Arsenal to get the win? Or, or do you think it is on City? Where are you at with this? Yeah, I think I think that's a good point. I think, like, because you know that, that City are, are, are going to go on some sort of run at some stage. So, you need to, um, yeah, you need to uh, get in front of them if we can. And... Um, I also think like home, you know, when you're at home, I, I think that, you know, like, I don't know when it is, it's probably April, May time that we go up to you, like, you know, you know that that's going to be a tough, tough game mm. uh, and, and you'll be favourites there. And so we have to get something in this game, like, and I, I think that we need to win this game, boys. I really do, like, you know, I, I think that the record's poor. I've been crying out for the last years for you to have a few injuries. Going in that game, like you know, you know, the Bruiners and uh, the Harlands are, are, are out injured or something like, or, or God forbid, it, or even even better that someone like Rodri could get the stupid uh, sending off and get suspended, mm. and it's happened. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you know, uh, I think I think realistically, your three best players and listen, you've got fantastic players all over the park. Don't get me wrong, from the back and whatever. But if you was to say right. Name three players that you don't want to play against us. I will go De Bruyne, Rodri and Haaland, probably like, you know. So two out of three ain't bad. There's a song about that. So I'll, I'll take that, like, you know. So, um, yeah. So I do think because of that reason as well, there's a little bit more pressure on Arsenal because uh, if, if you was to go to the Emirates and beat us without those players, I, I think that's a damaging thing for our confidence where, you know, it's going to just... Um, Feel feel uh, um, Man City with a load of confidence. Now, don't get me wrong; you replace those players with quality players as well. But I just think that the the difference between City being a really really good side and a fantastic side is those three players. Mm. Yeah, no, that's fair, Potsy. I mean, in terms of the title, it's early days. I'm not going along with this title decider already. You know what I mean? It's match day eight for God's sake, but. I mean, if City do go to the Emirates with a with a heavily weakened squad, um, obviously no no Rodri, no Kevin De Bruyne, no John Stones, um, and beat Arsenal. I mean, what does that say about Arsenal's title hopes? I mean, you you'd only be four points behind us. It's not over, but is that is that a bit of a worrying sort of situation? And therefore, do you agree with do you agree with Lee that the sort of pressure is probably on Arsenal to get a win? Yeah, of course the pressure's on us, mate, because you're the current champions. And we were eight points clear last season at one stage and still couldn't win the league. So if we let you go four points ahead of us, then, you know, and to be fair, <laughs> it could be seven if you would have actually beaten Wolves, which I expected you to do. It yeah. could have been seven and everyone would have been said titles over and it's who's going to come second now. And um, for me, this is mentally massive for both sides, really, but more so Arsenal because it's been, what, seven, eight years now since we've actually beaten you in the league. 2015 was the last time we beat you at home 3-1. And I know we've beaten you in the FA Cup and the Community Shields, but the, my point is not that. My point is that Arteta needs to get one over Pep Guardiola and Manchester City. Mm. And if we can't do it in the circumstances of Kevin, Kevin De Bruyne being out, Rodri being out, I know that you've got replacements for them, but I think Gundogan and Mares have done some horrible things for Arsenal over the last few years. And I know you've replaced them now with Doku, who looks like a top talent. And obviously, I rate Kovacic highly and think he looks like he's been playing for you guys for a long, long time already. But I must say that if I could pick four players to be out, then other than Haaland, it probably would have been those four, to be fair. Um, so we've got to go there and we've got to have the confidence and the belief that we can do it. The fans are going to be behind us. I think the manager knows what this means. Um, mm -hmm. But Manchester City are, without Rodri and, and, and KDB, still an unreal side, man. You know, uh, you, you can't sit there and say, oh, well, that's be easy. That's a three points and let's move on to the next one. This is a top, top side, man. And Pep Guardiola knows how to get it right. No matter who he plays, 
he seems to get it right. So, yeah, I'm nervous as always, but in a way, I'm looking forward to it because it will be a massive game. You know, whatever the yeah. scoreline is, it will be a fantastic one. And everyone, whether you're a City or Arsenal fan or a football fan, are looking forward to this for sure, man. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I hear that. I mean, lads, I mean, we're going down to Emirates. We've got a good record against Arsenal, but obviously we do have to, do have the injuries. I mean, a point for City is not, not the worst result in the world, but there are some big, obviously, big decisions for Pep Guardiola to make, especially in the midfield, because Grealish come back in. Doku, who started the season so well, mm -hmm. but he's still obviously very inexperienced at this, lev uh, at, at this level. What sort of... What are the main decisions that you see Pep making? How do you think he's going to sort of set the team up? Do you think he might go there and think points okay? It's a weird one because we don't normally find ourselves in a position where we're going to be, you know, settling for a point. And I say settling for a point. I think if we were to draw the game, I think it'd be a decent result. You can't argue that a draw away at the team is probably going to challenge you for the title. So I think I genuinely just don't even know where to start with the team. I just have it's one of them games I just have no idea. I, I could pick a, a team now. I think I'll be three or four players out regardless. Mm -hmm. But I think Jack Grealish played amazingly last year away at Arsenal and he's got a lot more confidence than he did a year or two ago. So I think I definitely want to see him in the team. I know people are debating him or Doku, but I think you've got to throw him in just off the back of that. Um whether he could play a little bit further back, I don't know. But as you said, it's it's a tough game. I, I don't really look at as much as I want to say, you know, we've won whatever it is, 12 games in the league in a row, you can't really look at record because we lost to Wolves last week. Yeah, yeah, Arsenal yeah. lost away from home against the odds midweek. We were looking ropey for parts of that game against Leipzig. So you can't really, especially at the start of the season, you can't throw records about and what happened last year here and there. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd, honestly, I'd honestly want to see Grealish in there. I definitely want to see Haaland. I want to see Alvarez as well. So mm. yeah, it's, it's a tough one to pick a team for, but you just got to trust Pep and as you said, I think a point would be a decent result, but this is probably the game we've played against Arsenal in the last few years I have the least confidence for. Last year, we obviously won the game there. The year before, it was tough, but yeah, I think I think this is the lowest confidence I've had going, going to the Emirates in a while. Yeah, it is, it is weird, and that's down to the players that, 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 that are not in the team, isn't it? And it's, it's crazy how just yeah. a couple of players can, can go from your team and obviously a bit of the core is gone, John Stone's at the back. Rodri in the middle and then Kevin De Bruyne a bit further up. The whole spine almost of your team has, has sort of disappeared there and your, your confidence levels are low. Listen, I want to come back to, to Potsy and, and judges. Feel free to bounce off each other on this one. Uh, Lee, I'll start with you though. City have had a great record against Arsenal in, in the Premier League. Why, why, why do you think that is? And what does Arteta need to do to, to change that? Because the record against City is, since, since Pep's been here has is, is, is frankly been horrendous in the Premier League. I mean, last year... I mean, I think I think the Emirates won three one. We, we, you know, that 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 was that was that that the home game. I think was four one. I mean, that was that was that like men against boys. I mean, how, how does Arteta close the gap here? Because he's got to close the gap somehow. Yeah, I think to be fair, I think in the last two home games he has closed the gap. I know we yeah, haven't won the fair. game, but I, I think mm -hmm. that we've uh, was very unfortunate in the in the two one game. The cut of decisions went against us, and and last season's ones we made mistakes, but. The reason that you're that you've got a great record against us is because you've been a better team. You know, what I mean, you can't can't argue that. And I think, like realistically, it's it's only like the last two years, three years that we've really been able to compete. Mm. I think the years before that, I think you know, it was always just a, how, how many he was going to win. I remember coming down once, and I uh, I think you won three nil, and I actually said, I think De Bruyne was fantastic, and I actually said, you know tongue-in-cheek, is he a good player or not? Because um, he's just, it was like a training session to him. He didn't even have to um, break sweat in a game like, you know, and and the last couple of games, he's had to really perform though to, to, to get you over the line, mm. you know. Um, so, I do think the gap's closed there at home, you know, away from home last season. Well, after one minute, I, I, I wanted to get out of the place, you know, so, but it, it is at home and, and I think that when you're playing like we have over the last couple of games and when there isn't been a lot a, a lot in it, I even say the 1-1 last season, you know, Man City had all their players playing. We lost Thomas Party on the day, if you remember rightly. Uh, and we had we had our chance. I didn't think we deserved to win the game, but I didn't think we deserved to lose that one. Made mistakes and, and obviously clinical finishing. I think now that we're in a stage where there's not a lot between the two teams. I still think Manchester City have got the edge, don't get me wrong. But, but home advantage just slightly evens that up a little bit. And this time, we've we've just got to take our chances and, and, and not make silly mistakes. Cut out those mistakes 
if you look at the community shield, we didn't make no mistakes and we end up drawing the game. And forget about the penalties. And I think that's that's the key thing for us. Mm. You haven't got De Bruyne. When you look back at that game at uh, the Etihad, you know, first 10 minutes, he goes through and it's a wonderful, wonderful finish, you know. So he is a big miss. And, and, and uh, listen, I, I think the big thing for us, and I you say about pressure, I actually, like as Dan said, uh, I can't believe we're going into this game only a one point behind. I thought it guaranteed four points. So we've got to take something from that now and go, right, this is the opportunity. You know, like, for instance, if, if you'd have done what we, everybody expected to do against Wolves, even if we beat you uh, on Sunday, we wouldn't have been above you. You know, psychologically now, if we can, it, I think it's a good, it's like a double-edged sword for us now. Like, you know what I mean? If we can get the win, that's great. But also, psychologically and all to go above you, going into an international break would be a massive, massive uh shot in the arm for us. So I think, you know, it's a massive game for us mm. to get the result. But listen, you, you can't argue with with facts. Do you know when they turn around and say to you, like, um, uh, right, how can you say it? Like, you know, oh, law of averages, you're going to have to win, like, you know. Well, I can tell you, law of averages, every time I go on a snooker table with Ronnie O'Sullivan, I'm not going to beat him. Hmm. I'm not. I don't matter if I play him a thousand times, two thousand times. I'm never, law of averages, I'm never going to beat him. Because, you know, he's better than me. And I think that's why you've got, you know, the, the record that you've got, because you've been so much better than us. But mm. we have we have uh, got that gap a little bit uh, closer. Mm. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. Potsy, what's your, what's your views on how it's gone in the last six years? And how close do you think you are now to City? And if you're not at City's level, how long will it take you to, to get to that level where you're actually like winning Premier Leagues and, and Champions Leagues? Whenever Pep Guardiola leaves, mate. Um, <laughs> I just don't really see us getting ahead of Pep. I just think he's too good, man. I think he's got everyone's number. And um, I don't know how long he's staying at City. I've no idea. People are talking about him having another couple of years and he might go and have another challenge. But no, no, luck. He'll probably sign another seven-year deal or something. Um Listen, I, I, I don't think that he, that Man City are unbeatable. Um, Wolves can get in behind you. That means that Arsenal can get in behind you for sure, right? But yeah. um, it, the reason that you've been so much better than us, and this goes back before Arsenal, uh, before um, Arteta, by the way. Um, you know, you were uh, you, you come onto the scene and, and Pep Guardiola under Emery and, and Wenger. You know, we, we had some tough times against you as well. It wasn't just Mikel Arteta here, but... I think now that he's the manager and I think that he has, to be fair, and his defence got us a lot closer to where we want to be. Um, and he certainly got us a lot closer to where we need to be for Man City. And last season, I still think we throw it away. I really do. And I think Mikel Arteta will look at that and and he will hate that. You know, Martin Odegaard has still come out and said in an interview how, how painful it was to feel that they were that close and they threw it away. Because we were close. Let's not like, beat around the bush. You should have won the, you should have won the league last year. Let's, yeah. that, let's be honest. Should have won it, mate. Should have won it. Um, I'm with judges. I think you have been better than us. I mean, let's be real. For the last few seasons, we've been lining up with Mustafi and Socrates and holding at our back line and wondering why we're losing 4-1 and stuff. You know, like, mm. it doesn't take rocket science to work out that you're, when you, when your, your players are coming up against those type of talents, that you're going to win the game. I think, for me, if you do a combined 11 now, I think we get a lot more players in than we ever have, if I'm honest with you. I don't look at a uh, combined 11 now and go, mm, yeah, maybe we could get sneak one in, but that's about it. So that means we got a lot better than you, LB. Do you know what I mean? And we, yeah, yeah. we are right up there now. Um, but over the last few, we can't look at that now. Completely different Arsenal sides, completely different Man City sides as well. Um, and I think what we've got now is a game that most Arsenal fans know that if we've got a fully fit side, I think we've got a great chance of winning because of the injuries that you've also got. So this one's going to be key, man. Absolutely massive game. Mm. Yeah, for me, I think I think Lee sort of touched on it then. I think the reason City have, 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 have beat Arsenal in the last seven years is because we play very similar football, but we're just a better team. You know, we're yeah. just a, we have better players and a, and a better manager. And if you play the same style, more often than not, just a better team will, will, will likely win. Wolves don't play the same style as, as City yeah. and Arsenal. So yeah, that's right, how they, right. you know what I mean? And I think that's that's the case. However, as your boys have pointed out, you have closed that gap. And, and I take the point, Dan, that like, if you go back maybe five years, I mean, how many players would have got in City's team from Arsenal's five years ago? Maybe, like say, maybe a couple of players now. You know, you're looking at some players pushing and that's probably... And, and, and Lee, Lee said it before, you are right. The last two games we've had at the Emirates, I mean, was it the Rodri one in the last minute of the game? Yeah. I, remember, yeah. I remember Luke's vlog, actually. It was mega. Um, absolutely, you know, 
that was very, very close. And we were quite fortunate that day. In fact, I actually think Arsenal were, were the better team on that day. Yeah. Um, we look we look very, very slow. So it's going to be an interesting... Lads, let me come to you again on this. Um, yeah. City's midfield, obviously no Kevin De Bruyne, no Rodri. It's looking like Partey is going to be back. I don't know if he's going to be risked. Obviously, I'm, we'll get the, get the boys' opinions on that in a minute. But Rice is there. Odegaard's there. I mean, is this a little bit of a worry for you? Because normally, when we play football against whoever we play, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, as we've seen last year, we dominate the ball, we dominate that midfield. Is is this a little bit of a concern for you that this time we go in there? I mean, we look look at what happened when we went to Newcastle um, last week. That that wasn't particularly great. Yeah. What's this midfield battle looking like for you? Yeah, I think I think it is a bit worrying compared to you know how we normally play. Any team in the world, we're going to probably overpower them in midfield, and that's obviously where a lot of the game gets played. So. It is a little bit worrying. I think that game against um, United, I thought Rice, when I was watching Rice and obviously scored that goal, I'm thinking, this guy's a real deal. So, mm. he's a great signing for Arsenal. I think he, he could be a player that changes the game. I think these these big games, unless there's obvious mistakes that we've seen Arsenal kind of make the last few few years against City, I think it is just big players in big moments, like that De Bruyne goal you mentioned, or it's a mistake, like a, a silly red card or a penalty or whatever, that, that can change the game. So, I think... In midfield, I do think Rice is a, is a real threat to us, especially driving with the ball like he does. But I just hope, like you said, with Arsenal playing a similar style of football, maybe they're not going to be able to double up on Haaland, which is, is something that has yeah. happened a lot this season. And maybe that means he gets a little bit more space, a few more chances. And that's just as a result of Arsenal attacking and, and playing you know, the ball out more. So, yeah, I, th- I think in midfield is a bit concerning. I think that is an area, especially with Erdegaard as well. I, I just think... It is a little bit worrying. That's all I can really say. I, I can't pretend I'm confident with the midfield, but I mm. think hopefully, as I said, Harland in the uh, the final third, third will be the difference. But we'll see. Mm. I think this, this this is this is going to be one LB in midfield. Like this is going to be one in midfield. And for me, I'm hoping Party is fit. Um, I listened to the press conference today. Sounds like he is. Would you um, risk him? Would yeah, risk- I would. I would, mate, for this one. Yeah, I would, man. A hundred percent. I don't want Kai Havertz in this team, man. I, I can't deal with this this bloke anymore. I can't w- keep watching him, man. It is is poor. You know, Lee, Lee differs a bit with me on this. I think Lee can see a lot more what he's bringing to the team. I, I, I just, I don't get it. I don't get this guy at all. I, I've seen him for three years at Chelsea, and I was taking a mick out of Chelsea. Fans of my mate saying, "Oh, he's awful. He's awful." Now we've got him. It's like, oh, he's... <laughs> Right, this guy is absolutely abysmal. So, um, I can't see him in the middle, mate. There's a lot of talk that he might go up top, which is going to be interesting as well. But um, for me, mate, Party Rice and Erdegaard, we haven't seen it yet. And I want to see it. I'm desperate for it. Um, you know, Luke mentioned it there. Declan Rice, a real deal. I didn't realise how good this, this guy was until he come and played for me week in, week out. He, I know I've said it on my show, LB, with you, and I'm winding up lawless about it, how good he is. He has been phenomenal for us. Mm. Absolutely outstanding. What's and he even actually bringing to Arsenal, Potsy, that you didn't have last year? Yeah, it's a really good question because what's how that's hard to answer is that we had Chaka and Party last year. They're completely different to what we've got now with Declan Rice. What I've never seen with Declan Rice and what I have started to see with England and now started to see now I'm watching more of him is that he can do everything in midfield. So he can sit on the six and hold in the anchor, but he can drive forward with the ball. And I don't think we've ever had that. Thomas Party, his best sort of game is when he's literally controlling and being the puppet master in midfield. Declan Rice can do both. He can play in the six, he can play in the eight. He's got the leadership qualities on the pitch that I never thought that he would have straight away. It's like this guy's played for Arsenal Football Club for five years, Lee, isn't it? You know, he's been yeah. literally, he's come in and you think, oh, he might need a bit of time. There's a lot of pressure. It's 100 million. Be like Jack Grealish come in. It's like, oh, 100 million. He's got to start doing something soon. And he had a season where he was all right. Now he's like kidding it. You look at what Declan Rice has done straight away. Boom, he's yeah. gone in there. I don't care. Judge me at the end of the season. If you think I'm a waste of money, go for it. He's not bothered by it. He's came and he's taken the leadership qualities off the pitch. He looks great. He's handled the media really well. He's taken, for me, no pressure on his shoulders whatsoever when there was pressure on his shoulders. And I think what he's done for me has been consistency, LB. This mm. season, there's been, what, eight, nine games now. He's been the best player every single game. You know, he's not had one off game yet, really. And that, for me, is outstanding. You know, when we played Lons the other night, everyone was shocking, mate. And I mean, seriously shocking. And he's the only one, along with Tommy Asu, that can walk out and go, do you know what? I give me best. The others didn't, but I did. And I've been so, so impressed with him, man. And if we've got Party Rice and Erdegaard, 
I honestly believe that we can get the better over your midfield because I've seen you against Wolves and Newcastle without Rodri. You've lost both games. As soon as he comes back in the side, funny enough, you win. So for me, he's a massive loss. And I think that that is where we could win the game, dominate that midfield, get party involved. He didn't come on the other night, which to me is a good thing because I didn't want him to come on and get a knock. Um, I know everyone's talking about Saka. It looks like Martin Eddie's definitely going to be out. But for me, party Rod, uh, party Erdegaard and Rice, that, that, that is a good... Uh, I'll tell you what this now, and I'm not saying this, I'm a gooner. I don't know many in the world that wouldn't look at that three and go, nah, don't fancy that. Don't fancy mm. them three. That's a very good midfield, man. Very good midfield. No, no, it is. It is. Lee, are you saying then, based off what Dan said, would you would you not risk party? Would you stick with Havertz or? What no, would you do? I, I, I'm with Dan on this one. Like you know, uh, I, I, I'd play part, even if it's for 60, 70 minutes against, because I think it will be won and lost in midfield. And look, listen, I think for the first time in a long while. You can turn around and say that two of our midfielders would be guaranteed of getting out over your two midfields, midfield players. So that's that's how it is at this moment in time. Rice and, and Ulegaard, uh, uh I, 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 I think, are, are superior. That 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 in itself to say that against Manchester City seems a little bit crazy to say, but that's how it is. But right, if you've got Rodri in there, then it's a different and De Bruyne, it's different. So listen, part is not not going to be the party of what he was last season because he, he isn't 100% fit. Um, I, I just think at the end of the day, like, you know, Dan was saying about Kai Havertz, Kai Havertz has done okay, but but so can party do okay. And what 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 Havertz can bring to the party, uh, I, I think part, part I've punned and you know, <laughs> uh, party can do the same, like, you know, yeah. and I, I, so I, you know, I think it's, it's worth taking the gamble as well. It's, it's like you got Manchester City um, and, and also after this, you've got an international break. And it's not like we've not had him in the team for the last three or four weeks anyway. So for me, I'd just say, look, you know, if it was an, uh, another team, probably I wouldn't, I, I would say, you know, which is a compliment of Man City, I wouldn't take the gamble. But I feel because it's Man City, it's such an important game, I would take the gamble on this one. I, I will feel a lot more comfortable. And listen, it might it, it might go wrong because he's not fit and whatever, like, you know what I mean? It might, but for me, if I see them three on the team sheet on, on Sunday, I, I'll feel a little bit more comfortable, like, you know. But listen, uh, you know, Havertz might have to do the job in as a defensive side of it. I think he's done his defending side okay this this season. But you know, like, as, as Dan says, it's not it's not worked out this this time at the moment. I'm 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 sort of hoping that he's he's going to have a great a, a Jack Grealish sort of time where he's mm. not quite. You know, I don't think Jack Grealish was poor in his first season by what, what a lot of people say, but he, he didn't live up to expectations. But he has over the last few seasons. I don't know. You know, what I mean, if he's getting used to the Arsenal way or whatever, I'm trying to make excuses for him at the moment um, as best I can, trying to make a case for him. But if everybody's fit. Um, then, then party plays. Listen, he's, he can be a hundred percent fit, but he's not going to be match fit. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. But, it, but I, if you can get him through 60, 70 minutes, and maybe then you know the game could be in our favour. Then maybe like bringing on Jorginho or, or even you know have to just defend it. Maybe that's the way to go. Like you know what I mean. But for me, party plays. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting, man. Because like I feel like for the first time, the vibe I'm getting is that. Uh, it's the the sort of pressures, I maybe mean, not pressures, but expectations of the game are sort of flipped. Like usually, it's City who, yeah, will go there and, and will win. You know what I mean? However, I feel like Arsenal and obviously you guys as well smell blood a little bit here. You know what I mean? Our team's weak uh, in terms of some of the key injuries we've got. John Stones has just been confirmed today. He's not going to be playing. Rodri's out. Kevin De Bruyne's out. Haaland's not fully firing at the moment. And Arsenal, you know, what I mean, Arsenal know. That this is this is a game that really they need to be winning because if they don't win the game, people will, I think people will look at Arsenal if they don't win and go, well, if they can't beat Manchester City when they've got three or four key players out, you know what I mean? When can they? Now, of course, there's debates on Saka, will he play? Will he not? I think that's a big. We've not really spoke about it. That's a big player for you guys, obviously out on that right hand side. Who I've just got to say this now. I think it's completely wrong the amount that he's been worked into the ground. I've been saying, and I'm saying that as an England as an England fan as well, because of course it affects it affects England with Southgate. And I I was quite surprised in the summer that no real 
competition was was bought for, for Saka because he's just going to be ran into the ground. I mean, he's one of your key players. He plays pretty much every game. And there's absolutely no surprise to me that, you know, he's now picking up a few little knocks here and there. That's key. Uh, Arsenal have to sort of look at rectifying that in, in the next transfer window, whether it be January or, 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 or the summer. Well, listen, it's going to be an interesting one. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, lads, do you reckon we'll get the win, bro? Or what are you saying? Oh, I, I, to be fair, some people don't like a score prediction. I'm, I'm always happy to give one, but I think it's I think it's just a 1-0 City. And I think it's I a game where there's going to be a lot of chances, but I think it's just going to be a very tight one. As you said, there's more pressure on Arsenal yeah. this year more than ever. So I just think it's going to be one of them games where... It's tight. It's a good game. A lot kind of happens, but there's just not too many goals. So I think little yeah. one nil City Harland sort of second. That's half. exactly what I've gone for as well. That's really? exactly what. Yeah, I've gone yeah. for. I've gone for one nil Harland Potsy. What are you saying, man? Is this going to be the time? Are you going to beat us or what? Nah, I don't think we will, man. I've gone for, <laughs> <laughs> I've gone for a two-two draw, bro. Um, okay. That's okay. what I've gone for. Yeah, I think it's. Um, it is going to be tough, man. Really tough. Still, with, with even without your players. And just quickly on the Saka thing, you're right. Criminal from Mikel, uh, Mikel Arteta, in my opinion. And uh, playing him against Bournemouth and Lons, <sighs> unbelievable. And and not trusting the squad, you know, what 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 is it all about? So, for me, I'd love to see us win, but I, I don't think we'll do it. I've gone 2-2, two, two, man. Yeah, and judges? I, I'm, I'm going to say, it is, it, we, you know, this is the time. 2-1 to the Arsenal. I think we're just going to nick it. I think... Uh, um, I, I think, like, you know, with your, with that midfield. I, I do think, like, you know, it's no coincidence that, that uh, you've lost your last two games without him playing, Rodri. Yeah. And as yeah. soon as he comes back in, you win, com well, it looked comfortable at the end of the day. But it, I, I think that's a big thing. And I, I, I'm going to say it now, Saka won't play Sunday. I, I, reckon. I, I think that's a smoke screen as well. I, I can't see him. Uh, I'll be very, very surprised if he does. I think he will, Lee. I think he will. Do you think? Yeah, I think he will. I think he will. A hundred percent. He's come out today in a press conference and said, "Oh, he's in contention." It, yeah, you know, that, is, that is that not yeah. a little bit of mind no, games? I yeah, I, 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 I think it is. You know what I mean? Like you know, so. this kid, man. I didn't think he's going to play in the last three games. He's lined up in every no, single one. I, I get that. I get that. But I think that maybe, maybe the uh, the decision hasn't been taken out of Mikel's hands. This, I think, this one will be. Mm. Interesting. Well, listen, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. A lot discussed. Which way is it going to go? Are Arsenal finally going to beat Manchester City, man? It's it's pretty crazy. Well, guys, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. I put all three channels in the description as well for the lads on the panel. And uh, yeah, I'll see you after the game.